This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Will. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Profile this coming up. Racial consultant standing by. Caller 9844-999. Ola's going to play profile this coming up in minutes. And we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. But first, quick check in to Mike Hawk for some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, a photo of a college student from New Hampshire went viral a few weeks ago, and she just got a modeling contract. Oh, yeah, I saw her picture. Was it any good? I mean, she's all right looking, but she does look like a model. You know, not every model is necessarily gorgeous, but there is a look about them that's weird or strange. Or it looks like you have no interest in anything on planet Earth. Like the Calvin Klein models, it looks like they've been lobotomized and don't care about anything, but they dress well. Kind of like that. Was this the girl from the Howard Homecoming? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to guess that she was. <laughs> <laughs> I think you follow me there, too. Yeah, I, I, I got you, too. <laughs> hey, she's pretty. She is. And like I said, she has that look on her face like I have no idea what's going on and don't care to know. Americans are earning an average of 3.9% more this year than last year. Yay! Hey, good things, man. And the cost of living's gone up about 12%. Yay! (laughs) I like how they always do that. Well, you're earning more. How about the cost of college tuition? Way up. How about the cost of living? Gone way up. How about the price of growth? Gone way up. In fact, you're nowhere near keeping up. But you did get a raise. Mm -hmm. I always like that you can buy stuff, but like homes, food, things you need. Pretty expensive. Oh, you can buy stuff. I got a lot of stuff. I just got nowhere to put it. You get a huge TV. We'll give you a couple thousand bucks for Christmas, and you'll forget all about it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Las Vegas started a new self-driving shuttle service yesterday. We talked about this just a moment ago, and within the first hour, another driver already crashed into it. Didn't he hit a delivery truck or something? I want to say it wasn't like they hit a Prius. It was a pretty substantial thing that the bus hit. Now, it does say that another driver already crashed into it, which yeah. actually makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, this it thing does. Can just careen into somebody. I know, but there's still just the idea of self-driving and the fact that it got hit anyway. And we've all been hit by another car, I know, but I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to give it a few years before I hop on that bus. <laughs> I'm with you, dude. Let them drive around you for a little while, make sure well, that you I mean, like, see there. Self-driving like trains or stuff that are on a track. Right, it's on a track. Like, I'm right. kind of fine with that, but self-driving cars that I'm getting in. Still, it's kind of scare me. Self-driving cars uh, work if all the other cars on the road are also self-driving. Yeah. If that were the case, I'd feel much safer. Yeah. But they're not. That's the model where it works. Right. The same idiots that drive are the same idiots driving. And See, I still worry with the self-driving cars. It's going to make you have unpaid parking tickets yep. for going to jail. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're taking you right now while we lock the doors. Yeah. See, now I would test that thing. I'd be driving in and around it. I'd be driving like a maniac just to see, you know, how, what makes this thing tick. That's a good idea, Mike. If yeah. I cut off just this much in front of it, does it veer off or does it have no reaction whatsoever? And here's Apparently. Mike watching a car go over a guardrail down a 50-foot cliff in the rearview mirror. The way they see this happening in the future, Mike, is let's just say that you're merging onto a, the Beltway in Dallas, right? Mm-hmm. You plug in your coordinates, and from the time that you get on that Beltway, your car takes over in self-driving mode. That way, everybody goes the same speed, mm-hmm. everything is... Now, when you get to your destination, when you get to the neighborhood or whatever, maybe you can take it out of self-driving, but while you're on certain roads and yeah. certain circumstances in the height of traffic or whatever the deal is, all cars just take over in self-driving, you just put your destination in, and then away you go from there. Well, that brings me comfort, because I always want my car to self-drive when I'm going as fast as I'm ever going but, to go in my vehicle. all the cars going the same speed and all in that stuff, theory. in theory... I, I would, would think work. that that would that that would cut down on traffic at least a little bit. It would, you because, know, because un, until you get that guy who's sitting there with the 1980s Honda Civic that doesn't have the auto drive look, in it, dude. and then he still kind of limps yeah. his way onto the road. You're still going to get the jackalope in the fast lane who's driving 50 miles an hour, right? Yep. And then we need to have flying cars that go over the top of it. Mm-hmm. That's an even worse idea. Mm-hmm. Starbucks is doing a buy one get one free promotion. Just order one of their holiday drinks, and you'll get another one for free. Because that's what you want, two drinks. That's right. <laughs> you know what I wanted Thanks. with my coffee? Another, another coffee. coffee. I will say, coffee's one of the few things where I wouldn't want two of them. Right. Yeah, it's not. I mean, like, well, one will do. You get the size you want based on what you need at that point in time. And <laughs> exactly. Kind of, you order to scale. Well, the thing is, the only time that I've ever had another cup of coffee was just a black coffee. I don't finish a sugary candy coffee. And then say, man, I really want another one. I usually need a glass of water after I'm done with that. Mike never has two cups of coffee. What? Mm. <laughs> You're too young, Mike. I guess I am. You drink Folgers, right? Yes. That was Sanka. I think that was Sanka. Was it what? Sanka? I think it was Sanka. 
Well, that's not an attractive name for something Sanka. you're supposed to consume. No. Mm. Give me some Sanka. Sounds like a dude's name. Yo, my name's Sanka. <laughs> Got the crystals. Actually, it's a flavor like crystal. Way to say thank you. Ah, Sanka, very much. Sanka. Experts say that cutting back on alcohol can pre- can help prevent cancer. No kidding. I'm sure. All right. Cut back on alcohol can help everything mm. in your life. And help prevent fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be safe. You'll be miserable, but you won't die nearly as quick. Put your hands in the air. Feel that rock. Moving on. <laughs> a 31-year-old woman in Massachusetts named Miracle Crimes recently got arrested for assaulting an employee at a gas station and kicking a police officer in the grind. It's a miracle. Her last name is Crimes? Crimes. Miracle Crimes. Miracle wow. Crimes. Dang. Well, I mean, if your last name's Crimes, no matter what you name your kid, it sucks. Sure. Sorry if your last name's Crimes, but you know it's true. And having a baby is not a miracle. I just don't know. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. Miracle sex. A, miracle's a tough name. Miracle's a bigger thing than that. What if your last name's Whip? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> mm-hmm. I would have gone with uh, Minority. Majority. Minority Whip. crimes? Whip. Oh. Yeah, like... Oh, oh okay. I got you. Politics I got you. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Sorry. All right, sorry. Give your kid a political show. name. Sorry, man. I wasn't tracking. <laughs> three teenagers who were a part of the LAPD's cadet training program stole three police cars and crashed two of them. All right. Good times. <laughs> they're in training. <laughs> I mean, obviously, they're in training. They crashed the car. That's right. But, I mean, that's what training's for, right? How old are these guys? Uh, Cadet training, so my guess is 18, 19. All right. For a police officer? LAPD? Probably over 21, but they're probably young dudes. All right. But I think also part of that is not just driving the cruiser. You're probably learning, like, fast, defensive driving. You might be able to do that, but if you're in L.A., you should be able to do that anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, you're born with that. A group of DC, deep sea explorers recently found something called a peanut worm off of the coast of Australia. Peanut mm. worm. And the internet is going nuts because it looks just like a sex toy. Oh, what kind is of sex like toy the, does it look like? I'm not. I don't know. I'm not working on it. Is this like the sea cucumber? <laughs> the sea cucumber. Be my guess. It's just. It's a lot worse looking. And what was guess. it called again, Mike? Is a this the salt worm. water eggplant? The sea peanut. Peanut worm. Eh, that's my old peanut worm. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> A 37-year-old man in Phoenix recently got arrested after he texted pictures to his ex-girlfriend that showed him relieving himself in her car. Oh, Ooh. damn, why they man. broke up. Number one relief? Oh. That'd be my guess. I'm I going mean, full be, Duke, man. Well, it'd be difficult to take a video of that. What, pooping? Yeah. You can take a video of yourself pooping. I'll take a video but, the next time I do it. But you can show the you. damage that you're doing with the peeing, man. You know what? Miles is right. I'm going to attempt that tonight, Mike. I will send you the video. Ah, perfect. Mm. Sounds like an Instagram story. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Check it out. I, Steve's pooping. <laughs> I, I will say, like, I get being upset with an ex, but man, peeing in a car. Right. That, that is, just go away. That's just rough. Just go do your life. Uh, some police in Florida went to a woman's home while they were investigating her for child neglect. And while they were there, her three-year-old son reached into his toy box and pulled out a loaded gun. Jesus Christ. Florida. I feel like I've heard that story before. Yeah. You will hear it again. Yeah. It's everywhere, man. It's everywhere. Right? I mean, you, you got to either lock those things up or not leave them around. I just don't know where I put it. Yeah. I lost track of it. Timmy put it in his toy box, apparently. A loaded weapon. And finally, the country of Sweden has denied a beer-loving father's name for his stepdaughter. What was that? I'll get. I'll tell you all about it one hour from now. Thank you, Mike Hawk. Headlines are coming up one hour from now. First, the game is on. The Men's Room presents... Profile this. And Steve, a thrill hill, can you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? A short can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Matt. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Micholas. Hola. All right, Matt, you understand how this here game is played? Yes, I do. All right, here we go. There is a woman in San Diego, California. She went into labor just before 3 o'clock in the morning this past Monday. So she and her husband, they got into a car, and he started speeding toward the hospital. But apparently, he was panicking just a wee bit too much because he crashed into a concrete barrier. It was his pregnant wife in the car. Well, they called 911, but he had trouble explaining where they were, and it was too late anyway. The baby was not waiting. So she gave birth right there in the front seat. Now, her husband ran into the street to flag down help, and it just so happened that the car he stopped 
it was, in fact, a nurse inside who was driving home from her shift. So she pulled over and helped this woman and her new daughter, and she made sure the baby was okay, the umbilical cord was not around the neck, etc. And then she told 911 dispatchers where they were actually located. Now, fortunately, the mother and her baby are both doing well. Uh, the question is, do you believe that the couple racing to the hospital is black, white, Mexi, or Asian? Hmm. Uh, there's not really a lot of clues. I mean, everyone races their babies to the hospital. Um, they didn't take an ambulance. Crashing. <laughs> yeah. Crashing the car kind of seems like a white dude thing, but what do the consultants think? Man, I can't help you on this one. I know the answer. I'm guessing uh, this is his first kid. The race into the hospital. Race into the hospital. Crash the car. Right, right. He loses control of the car and hits one of those concrete barriers. All right. And luckily, mom is okay, but obviously this does not help keep the baby inside. So the kid at this point, that kid's coming out. And then somebody comes over and helps him. Yeah, he flagged down another car. It happened to be a nurse, so he got lucky on that. But she ran over and helped deliver the kid. The kid's fine. They eventually made it to the hospital. Yeah, I'm just not sure crashing cars leans anyway. Like, everybody can crash Actually, a car. It means Asian, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, uh, my sister works in the parking lot with a lot of Asians that go there because there's an Asian mart, and it's scary. So I think I'm going to go Asian. You're saying a lot of Asians go to an Asian market. I'll be goddamned. Yeah. <laughs> what are they doing there? I can't drive, man. <laughs> so you want Asian? Yeah, Asian. Final answer. All right. right. We're going to find out if the couple is black, white, Mexi, or Asian next. That was a tease. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. My profile this takes us to San Diego and a couple who was in labor. So, of course, uh, they're pretty nervous. they got to get to the hospital Just as fast as they was, can. Miles. That's right. <laughs> the, the, fa- the father. Yes. <laughs> Father's in labor. Yeah. Uh, either way, uh, yeah, they're speeding to the hospital, and uh, obviously with the uh, nerves going and everything like this, a uh, guy is uh, obviously, or maybe just not paying attention to the road. Either way, he slammed into a jersey wall, and from there, the baby was born in the car. Fortunately, one of the uh, drivers that the guy flagged down to get help, well, she was in fact a nurse, so she was able to uh, deliver the baby, and then eventually, I guess, they made it to the hospital. But the question, Matt, was she black, white, Mexican, or Asian? And in the end, you went Asian, and you said, look, man, there's not a lot of clues but the guy crashed the car, and you went with that age-old stereotype that Asians can't drive, which makes you sound like a horrible person. But you're also correct. Wow. <laughs> Go figure. Congratulations, Matt. You win nothing. Now for all TV news all the time, it is time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. I'm again. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah. Uh, I think for most people, you're probably on good behavior when you're with uh, like your significant other or whatever. And it, it, it comes up your relationship, right? Mm-hmm. So generally, you're going to say nice things. You're not going to be like, actually, me and this woman been arguing. Like, it's not a, it's not a good time or whatever. Not if you're there. No, you're not going to share your personal life. Right. So, basically, here's the deal. Ozzy Osbourne has been married to Sharon Osbourne for many years, right? And then... And was, he remembers about three of them. Right. So, it was, I think it was last year the story came out that Ozzy was boozing again and sleeping with some other women. So, they had a ceremony to renew their vows, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Ozzy is on the view that Sharon is one of the hosts of, and the subject comes up. But keep in mind, when you hear him answering, she is sitting right next to him, and it, I don't know. He sounds, to me, he sounds a little bit like a prisoner, just like, yeah, everything's great. After everything you've been through and after the vow renewal, how has your marriage changed? It's a thousand percent better. Oh. <laughs> you don't even know what he said. It's, it's a journey, really, a uh, uh, marriage. You, you go up, you go down, you make mistakes, you try t- and learn by your mistake. Mm-hmm. I've learned a lot this year. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like she wrote that down for him. Was like, say this. Guaranteed. No. You could can, you can watch that interview if you want. You can make your own decisions on it. Mike and I thought he seemed a little off. You know what, though? I it's think at the Men from Facebook page. He's probably made that statement seven times in the course of their marriage. You know what I mean? Because you read this, and look, I get Sharon's perspective. I understand this. But the flip side is, in the years that they've been married, this is Ozzy acting like Ozzy. It's like someone getting upset because Mick Jagger dumped them. Okay, let me ask you a question, Ted. All right? Shoot. If, 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 I, can do anything that I, want, if I can do anything that I want to do with, with my job, and I'm an Ozzy situation, all right? 
So I, I, I say this is the best time. We're closer now than we ever have been before. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, what do you think I'm going to do next professionally? Do a show with Sharon. No. Release a love song. No. I don't know. You're going on tour. So this is all you all need right, to know. Ozzy Osbourne is back great. It's with great. his original guitarist, Zach Wilde. Now, not his original guitarist. Not his Don't original get the Randy Rhodes yeah, people right, and J.P. Right, Lee. Right, right. right. His right. long-time right. long guitarist. Long time guitarist. You're absolutely right, without question. Uh, and we know a little bit about th- those guys. We know a little more than a lot of people. Yeah. So here's my speculation, okay? And Zach Wilde, I think, stopped drinking, though. That is what we have yes, heard. Yes, that is what yes. we understand. That is correct, mm-hmm. and so did Ozzy. No, no, no. That's that's what we've heard. That's what we understand. This is not something I understand, right. but okay. it is something I have heard, yes. But, uh, and, and both of them are, are very nice people, for, for without question. They're, they're very Certainly. gracious. They're, that, they're, yeah. they're unbelievably nice. They're unbelievably kind and sweaty. Uh, and so <laughs> they decide to go on a tour. Now, Black Sabbath just kind of finished their goodbye, good night, yeah. we're out, you know, more. We're not doing this anymore. People are getting old. Tony Iommi's got some uh, got some cancer issues going right. on. He's trying to battle. Obviously, that's probably the last time they're going out. Ozzy's an old man. However, they decide to go on tour. So anyway, Ozzy's going to go out and not play a handful of dates, and not play here in the country close to Sharon. The way this tour goes is is they go into like Mexico, mm-hmm. and then they go into like South America. Then they get to, like, Australia, and then over to Japan and Asia. Then they kind of wind their way through Europe. They still haven't announced dates for the United States, as far as I know. Maybe they have, but it's after they see every speck of dirt on this planet. Mm -hmm. So for the next nine months, look, I'm going on a nine-month vacation around the world with my friends. That's the next. (laughs) Of course I'm the happiest man (laughs) on the planet. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, I was it saying is, to Mike, like, sometimes I wonder with them, is that like a real marriage or is it just like a business deal? Well, it's always point? been a business deal because her dad used to manage him and then she took over managing him in the early 70s. And it's a business deal. No, no, no. I, mean, I there's, think there's, it's there's always been business involved, right. but I mean, like, I, I, I just think, don't, for them, it might just be like, hey, it's good for both our business. I think it is good for both our business, but beyond, and I think they're both aware of that, but I also believe that they do truly love each other. Oh, sorry, but yeah, like, I got to go on the road. I'm but, sorry. I don't think that Sharon is always the victim in the situation. No. I think in this marriage, I think they both probably tolerate quite a bit. And like I, they're I, very opposite in many, many ways. But Miles is right. Like at this moment, he probably is beaming. Like, hey, man, we passed up whatever's going on, and I'm gonna go get laid for the next nine months. I'm gonna be gone and drink and do drugs and everything that I do every uh, time I go on tour. Sharon, I'm a Lisbon time. I didn't see a call. It's three a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aussie, it's noon there. Uh, I slept in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, come, come on. on. Yeah, but she's got to know. I mean, one thing about it—you can think whatever you it want wasn't about Sharon one Osborne. Girl was like I don't, six. I don't think that she's stupid. You know what I mean? She's not. An no, idiot. whatever no, no, else no. you might think of, not, the woman's not an idiot. And look, you so she knows. Tiger don't change its stripes. You talk about Tiger Woods? Just doesn't. He still goes to Perkins. That's mm-hmm. what I mean. He doesn't change his stripes. We know. I get it, man. The same know. person you married, the same person you know, they're the same goddamn person they've been their entire life. All of a sudden, they're not going to go like, all of a sudden, like, well, I'm I'm not going to be adulterous anymore. I've changed my evil ways. Right. So oh, I'm going to tour with my boy, best friend. I hope my company doesn't send me out of town, because that's always been my playground. <laughs> yeah. I on. mean, really? Yeah. So, I mean, right. That's what I'm saying. I think they, I think they just think together because they've been... It's yeah, been that long, yeah, and it's good. And it's I'm good sure for they love each other, and they have children they care about, and they have a lot. Look, Absolutely. she's she's still making money off of him. She she still makes money off Ozzy. If it were up to Ozzy, you know, he wouldn't be doing all this. Right. I mean, maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. But ultimately, yeah. she's still the manager and telling him what to do and where to go and what where to be. So she knows damn well he's leaving for nine months or whatever it is, three months, four months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's it, it's a weird one. But I will say, when you see that video clip. It's just weird because he's just sitting there. She's kind of staring at this giant picture behind him. It's like, yeah, you better say the right thing, dude. Yeah. And do you remember the story he said he told us about? Uh, he was talking to us about. Uh, and, and actually, Ozzy was very coherent when he. You could understand he everything, and he was, he was. He was. He was just talking the way you know. He's just like telling you a story. And he's like, and his house just caught on fire. So his house had just caught on fire, and uh, and we had him on right after that, and the smoke alarms went off, and they had to evacuate everybody, and the fire department had to put out a serious fire at his house down in L.A., right? So 
it, basically what Sharon had done is she'd taken like these, and they had like 20 foot ceilings in her living room, yeah. whatever. These huge ass, like 18 foot flowing curtains. And the windows were open. And then she has these pedestal uh, candles that are like where the candle stick is like four or five feet high. You've yeah. seen the real big one. So it actually looks like, well, an Aussie album. <laughs> right. you know, it looks like these are big <laughs> church ass candles, right? He's like, and I told her, if you keep lighting those candles, you're going to catch the house on fire. God damn it, three o'clock right. in the morning. Was like, eh, eh, eh. Like, Sharon, you caught the house on fire. <laughs> So he, like, runs outside naked. He's grabbing buckets of water. He tells us he's trying to put the curtains out. He's stomping on the curtains. But you know you're I mean? picturing Ozzy Osbourne he naked told her, with a but bucket he said of he, water trying yeah. to put out a fire. And you're like, yeah, dude, also, there's no chance. But he also told her he told her no less than 50 times not to do that. Yeah, don't. Because the house is going to catch on fire as the wind blows the curtains in all over these candles that you have lit. I told you I knew a guy that was a fireman. And he always gave his wife a hard time about the leaving uh, laundry next to the dryer. Right. And he was like, hey, that's a fire hazard. So one day they're sitting in the firehouse and the call comes across and it's like, that's my address. And basically what he had feared had happened. Yeah. But see, that's the problem. I'm pretty man. sure they got divorced after that, too. It's, he's probably right, but we've all done it. But it's like, look, if you are married to or date someone who is a fire person, they're yeah. going to tell you everything's a, a fire hazard. If you date a dentist, they're going to tell you that everything you eat's bad for your teeth. It just so happens, though, that if you are with the firefighter, your house is going to catch on fire based on what they told you. Now, everyone else could do it as long as you're not with the firefighter. If you're with the firefighter, that's when your house is going to catch on fire. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. also a generation that 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 that, un, that not understands but has been through discretions before where you don't talk about it. Hell, your mm-hmm. grandfather could have cheated on your grandmother a hundred times. You would never know from that generation. They just kind of do what they do. You know, what This I mean? is like a man who went to church seven days a week. and He was that religious, and I said, no, but I know my grandmother. And basically, <laughs> he had an out. Because so, no one's going to tell you, don't go to church. And I don't know that he went to church, but the working theory was that he went to church seven days a week. And I want you to understand something. This is the, the same, And he was a pious guy. He really was. I don't know about the church seven days a week, only because when I was 15 and spent a couple of weeks with them, when my parents did whatever, he's the one who bought me the album, See You in Hell from Grim Reaper. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if you're going to church seven days mm. a week. Uh, we always hear about Tom Brady. Uh, the crazy stuff he does on the field. Some people think he's Benjamin Button. And he's getting younger. Uh, but you always hear about his strict, strict diet. So here's Tom Brady doing an interview, and he is human being. Favorite junk food that you don't eat, but if you could eat it, that you would splurge on it? Uh, ice cream or a cheeseburger. But I do eat those. Yeah, I just don't eat a lot. All right. Yeah, every once in a while. The man is human, he folks. Does. No, of course he does. I just I heard that today, and I was like, that's awesome. Tom Brady likes a cheeseburger and a milkshake. Of course yeah. he likes a goddamn cheeseburger and, then, and a milkshake. And that's what they tell you as far as the secret of sticking to anything. Yeah, man, you eat a healthy diet, that's great. But the great thing about eating a healthy diet is when you want to eat what you, what you want, you, you can. You can. And so it's not like... Where you do a diet where you have to take everything out. And uh, Robin, you just went through one of those things where you couldn't eat a bunch of things, and they have this whole list of things. And now, you were very happy but, about but, that but, the whole but the, time. But the difference was, if it's a lifestyle, and it's what you do all the time. Sure. Then, but but you got to remember, man, this is a guy who probably works out in a gym for two hours a day, it three leaked. hours a day. I mean, those calories are all coming off no matter what. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised that he doesn't need to stack more protein, stack more other I, stuff. That's a good just, point, right. Just to get you know where he needs to be. But obviously, he does that because he's already there. I think, do you think Tom Brady eats fancy cheeseburgers or like cheap ones? He's like, let's just go to White Castle and get like 30. I can't picture him eating the cheap stuff, man. I can because it, because a hamburger is different than any other kind of food item. Yeah, but it, it's him. Like most people, yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying he's snooty. It's not like that. I just get the feeling. Snotty? Snotty, snooty, snooty whatever it he's is. He's a California boy, man. I'm telling you, he's going to get an In N Out burger. Abe Roman, maybe he's a California guy. Man. I feel like the toppings I, he would get would piss me off. Dude, my, that's a good bird. Right? Why he's, the avocado? He's Tom right. Brady. He's married to a supermodel. Don't ever forget, he also impregnated another supermodel. Right? He's Tom Brady. He scores touchdowns. Right? Top flight lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Everything. He's not the breadwinner in his family. So maybe, my man brings home. I'm with Miles. Maybe when he wants a cheeseburger, he's like, I just want to go get a fast food cheeseburger. Right, exactly. That's what I think. And if he's at a fancy restaurant, he's going to eat the fancy food. But he's not going to eat a hamburger for dinner with his wife at a top-notch high-end restaurant. Although I'm sure they have a fantastic burger. Well, either that or it is Tom Brady the way we think he is. And, and his flies, personal chef. Right, he flies in a dude from Japan with wag, or, uh, Wagyu beef. Uh, wagyu, Wagyu. Wagyu. Kobe? Yeah, Kobe beef. Kobe, yeah. Like a Kobe beef burger. Like, ah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Tom. Would you eat a Kobe Bryant burger? Sure. Would it have a little afro on it? What would it have on it? 
Uh, Nutella. Guilt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate hamburger. <laughs> Who's tried that, huh? Uh, let's see. Uh, Conan has been all week at the Apollo Theater in New York City in Harlem. Uh, here's Conan talking a little bit about uh, performing at the Apollo. It is great to be back at the Apollo Theater. We just love sure it. Sure is. Think about it. So many legends have graced the Apollo stage. Ella Fitzgerald, Jimi Hendrix, James Brown. Isn't that cool? Yeah, tonight I can almost hear their ghost saying, who let that white woman on stage? <laughs> I can't tell you how much I miss this city since I moved to Los Angeles. I have to I'll be honest with you, yeah. I tell you, yeah. It's different. It's really different there. In Los Angeles, I had to hire someone to tell me to go f*** myself. <laughs> uh, also, a lot of people, you know, he's making those jokes there. Like I've said uh, earlier this week, the Apollo Theater, obviously a massive uh, landmark and everything for black entertainment and and uh, singers, comedians, whatever. Did you guys ever watch Showtime at the Apollo? Yeah, yeah, of course. How could you not? All right. We don't have to play the whole thing, but give him a little Showtime at the Apollo. Robin, this is the old theme song. Tonight, oh. from the village of Harlem in New York City. The whitest guy on earth. The world famous Apollo Theater, where oh. dreams are born and legends are made, is proud to present It's Showtime at the Apollo. Here it comes. It's Showtime. Star oh, right. Steve Harvey. Yeah, man. Steve Harvey was the host. All for one. <laughs> so I used to watch Showtime at the Apollo, I want to say Saturday nights. It came on. At it came like, on late. Yeah, it came on mm-hmm. late, man. We would stay like up. after midnight. Yeah. So Steve Harvey was always hosting it. Uh, what was her name? Kiki Sh- Kiki Shepard? The really hot chick. You watched that, that and then the Byron Allen show would come on after it. Yeah, Byron <laughs> Allen interviewing everybody you could imagine. Without actually physically being, there, being right, present. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, like, if you ever watch the old show, uh, Showtime at the Apollo, yeah. like, I can't explain to people how involved the audience was. Oh, yeah. So there was always amateur. It's a black audience. A black audience gets very heavily involved in whatever the performance is. Yeah. Movie, play, the Apollo Theater. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes, like, for amateur night, like, a dude would come out there, right? I want to say one time I saw, like, a white guy come out there, and they're already kind of booing him a little bit, <laughs> but then he wins him over, and by the end of it, it is the most raucous, right. loud applause you've ever heard you, in your you, life. You bring it on stage there, man, and you, you'll oh, get it in return, but if you don't, then you won't. I yeah. Mean, that's, that's the bottom line. And if the audience decides Comedian you Comedian lies, whatever. Right, and start booing you, then the Sandman comes out and just shoes you off the stage. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Conan's lucky. All his jokes don't have to be good because I don't think the Sandman's there right now. I saw Conan uh, live while he was uh, when he was going through the transition of trying to figure out what his uh, what his new career was or what his new job was going to be or if he was going to keep doing late night talk after he got fired from NBC. And it's it's a incredibly entertaining live show. He did a couple of hours and it was fantastic. Took a break at about one hour, came back, had guests, did monologue, did music. I mean, the guy's pretty talented. He basically just went on tour and kind of did his show since he wasn't working, right? Correct. Yes. Right, because what, what was it? Was that like a year? Like, how? Like, cause, I, right, you in know, between I, NBC and, and the TBS show, he just wanted to keep working, keep doing his thing. And I, I tell you what, I was impressed because it was the it, it was the Conan you can't see on TV. Right. So if he's going to drop an f bomb, he's going to do whatever he's going to do. That was that was all part. He didn't really go over the top on that, but he could when he wanted to. Yeah, that'd be fun to see Conan O'Brien cursing. Sure, be fired up. Uh, Will Ferrell, obviously an A list star. Uh, you would think on most shows that he would be the first person out, but uh, he got bumped on Seth Meyers by uh, Hillary Clinton, and uh, I don't think Will Ferrell's too happy about it. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. And I, I, wanna, I owe you extra thanks. Uh, yeah. We had you booked first, and then uh, we actually had to ask you, uh, would you be willing to be a second guest to, to Hillary Rodham Clinton? And you said, yeah. I'm not the first guest? Um <laughs> No, Hillary. Hillary Rodham Clinton was just out here. Yeah, Hillary, uh, an impersonator? No, no. We had the real, the real Hillary. Yeah. You, wow, Hillary? Yeah. Was Why? sitting here. Why were you? What were you watching in your dressing room? I was uh, playing Sega Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the very old. The very old <laughs> Sega. We don't Genesis. have one. Did you? Bring? I have a pocket Sega. Oh, Genesis. gotcha. Yeah. Bring. <laughs> I love Will Ferrell. Yeah, he's great. I mean, he he can make anything good. Uh, always does great interviews too. Uh, so ratings, obviously, the World Series dominated last week. It should have. Yeah, everybody was fired up. Uh, game 7 was the most uh, viewed show of the week, which it should have been. Game 6 was in there. You know what amazes me? And Sunday Night Football is always going to be in there, too. But I'm always blown away still that so many people watch 60 Minutes. 
I'm glad they do. I mean, it is what it is. I, I felt like I was forced to watch it as a kid because all of us were. Like I said, it was the most terrifying like, sound. Was Manuel Noriega. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, God, I don't even know what the hell they're talking about. But now I'm, I'm, I'm watching all the I, time. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, Sunday, as an adult, it's much different. Yeah, but I do kind of miss Andy Rooney. Oh, uh, there's a lot. Of, I mean, dude, those guys were... I'm the, Andy Rooney. Those guys were on just the cusp of death when we watched as children. It's amazing they hung they up for that They were always long. old, to I mean, the point were, where I'm like, is this a seance? Like, why like, did you how? send this guy to Antarctica? He's already dead. They were shocked when he came back. Yeah, he had some... Maybe uh, that's why they did those assignments. Yeah, like, there's hey, no worry, way he's you back. go here. <laughs> we'll get rid of him. He'll never come back without a disease from that place. <laughs> You are right, though. We they, know his proclivities. They did seem old when I was a kid, too. I've always beach. been old. I'm on a beach in Thailand. <laughs> I'm here for the beaches. <laughs> Just the beautiful beaches. They're beautiful. But That's it. <laughs> this city has a dirty underlying thing, and I'm investigating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. We got your headlines coming up with Mike Hawk. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Man dies the most Iowa death ever after a bin malfunction buries him in corn. Meanwhile, a Swedish couple gets a baby dame uh, denied as a young pilsner cannot be born. New study says Americans check their phone 80 times a day. Three new toys to enter the Toy Hall of Fame. If you want to go old school when you play. And more Iowa news as the FBI gets involved in a high-tech cheating scandal. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my call. All right, our top story. A couple in Sweden is taking on the tax agency for the right to name their daughter what they want. The man not only loves his daughter, but he also loves beer. And he wanted to apparently combine the two and name his daughter... Pilsner. The agency, however, feels that the name is inappropriate and has rejected it. Inappropriate. inappropriate. It's Pilsner. I mean, come on, man. It's a beer. I it's get... not the greatest name, but it's not the worst name. You know, let people name their kids what they want. You hear about parents like, I'm going to name my kid Adolf, or I'm going to name my kid Hitler. I think it's a stupid idea, but it's your prerogative to name your kid what you want. But I can see where they're going with that because while you're being cutesy with the name, the kid's the one that has to deal with that for the rest of their life. Yeah, that becomes their problem, Mike. <laughs> Welcome to the world, kid. Look, man, how do you, that Sweden you said? Yes. How do you think they'd react to the black community in America? Yeah. I don't name my kid the Brickishaw. Well, yeah. And to be fair, yes. Laryngitis. And to be fair, yes. Once you start regulating names, the list only gets longer. It never gets shorter. I'd rather be laryngitis than uh, Myrtle. Myrtle? Myrtle? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, a name. I mean, I mean like, if you want to go back, I mean, like, my God, I can come up with, like, ten old school names. Either way, I mean, yeah. Hilda. Is, is there a Myrtle that's alive today? Sure. Where? Right. <laughs> that's one of those names that died out that in the my, 30s. That, that was my great-grandmother's name, Myrtle. Right. She's still around? Great-grandmother, Myrtle? Grandmother, no, great-grandmother, Miles. No way. Myrtle Johnson. <laughs> Myrtle right. Johnson, that was her name. Johnson. For Myrtle. Oh, John- Johnson. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Myrtle Johnson. Like Johnston. <laughs> Not your Johnson. It's bigger. It's a Johnston. <laughs> Myrtle. I don't got no Johnson. I have a Johnston. Myrtle, I need some tea. <laughs> All right, around the world, in what has to be the most Iowa death ever, a man near the Missouri Valley met a tragic end when a grain bin that was leaking corn burst open, burying him in corn. Do you know Damn. what happened, man? A supervisor went uh, with this guy to check it out, and they did see where the door was leaking corn, right? So think about like a pretty like think about a silo, but instead of the big tall silo that you're used to, think more like a tuna can. Okay. So thicker and wider, and you know what I mean, shorter. Mm-hmm. But right when they were there, the whole thing blew open. Oh. So the one guy got blown all the way back out by the corn, and he got thrown out of the way. The other guy got buried in mm-hmm. it. They couldn't get him out for an hour. Yeah, he, he was died. Pu- he was pulled out well over an hour afterward and pronounced dead at the hospital. That is uh, that is an Iowa way to go. Wow. Death by corn. Mm-hmm. Nasty, man. Damn, man. Just crushed him to death. Oh, did he kernel. choke on it? No, no, he wasn't eating the corn. It would have had to have been crushed to death, man. Yeah, I guess so. Did it say how many tons weight? of uh, well, corn? Well, if it's a silo, man, i got to imagine that that's just a, a load. They should give him I a imagine day. he should have like heard it coming, though. Man. A lot of ears. Oh, Jeez. really? Wow. They're going to they're gonna get him a send-off, Ted, like if he was in the Army and a colonel. <laughs> Oh, no. It's terrible, guys. Of- <laughs> Moving on. I can't make a kernel joke? <laughs> Everyone gets fried chicken yeah. at the it's funeral. It's all sheer stupidity. <laughs> Moving K- on. KFC catered the funeral <laughs> for the colonel. All right. The Toy Hall of Fame has some new entrants. However, finalists that didn't quite make the cut were the game Risk, the Magic 8-Ball, Matchbox Cars, My Little Pony, Pez Dispensers, 
play food. I've never heard of that one. They don't, it's just yeah. pretend food. It's oh, like so the, you're saying, wait, you're saying stuff. these did not make it? In no, they, they did, did not, not make it. They were finalists, didn't make it. Clue, Sand. clue, paper, airplane, and what was the other one that made it? Wiffle, Wiffle ball. ball. Wiffle ball. They've taken a win out of my Actually, shows. pretty solid there. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, man. I was getting there, Miles. Sorry, man, I, I didn't know. Look, man, Damn. I'll tell you right now, the, the plastic food, that is a mother effing hit. I yeah. recently got rid of a bunch of it, but at one point, the kids... How hard was it to, to, to get rid of it? You do it... You, here's the thing. Did man, you keep, right? like, some fries or anything? You keep a little bit. So, of all the food they have, man, you get rid of about 20% at a time. You can't do it all Because they once. have an imaginary kitchen. Yes, they do. And they would constantly come upstairs and ask me if I'd like a bite of whatever they've come up with. And no, I goddamn don't. But I would fake it and act like I'm eating these horrible meals. But eventually... and. And finally, there is none of that S left. There mm-hmm. is not a single. But, man, it is an effing hit with kids. Mike, can you make it? You seem like the type of guy that can make a really good paper airplane. I can, actually. I can make a, I, I can make a really good paper airplane. <laughs> I bet you can. I could, dude. It just seems like. I have skills that pay the bills. Moving on. <laughs> but that's not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have we, skills that pay the So being a paper airplane maker, I, I get pays you Oh, yeah, dude. Okay, right. I think I'm, he lives that luxury lifestyle. That's right. I'm a hit at the fair. Kids all want my airplanes. Mike, are you any good at wiffle ball? You know it. All right, I'll strike you out. I'm oh, the yeah. champ, man. I'm the champ. I <laughs> Ted got throws the eye. Some, Ted throws some nasty junk. Yeah, yeah. man. Me too. I've met you a lot, of, na- hey, met hey, a lot of nasty junk. You know what I do with it? I hit it out the park. Bam. Bam. Moving on. Wow. Fired up in there. All right, <laughs> let's get a wiffle ball bat and play this. Let's do yeah. this. Seriously. I'm in. I'm in, too. I'm in. We go to New York where a jury has ruled in favor of graffiti artists that sued over their work being destroyed. They received the okay from a building owner to go ahead and mark up the walls of the building, but did caution them that the building was condemned to be destroyed within the next few years. The graffiti artist sued along the lines of the Visual Artist Rights Act of 1990 that protects the artist's rights even if the piece is owned by another entity. So basically, even though the guy owned the building, he sold it to somebody that was going to destroy it, the fact that their art was on it... It's protected by this act, and so a jury actually ruled in favor, and now they're just trying to trying to determine really the monetary. Uh, so let me, uh, let me get this straight. I offer an artist a piece of canvas to do a painting on, mm-hmm. and he. Do, but I tell him at the time, when you're done in about a year, I'm going to light this bitch on fire. Yes, and he says, you know, I'm going to go ahead and paint on it anyway. Mm-hmm. And then a year passes, and I light that bitch on fire. Mm-hmm. And now he's going to sue me in spite of the fact that this was explained clearly to this person. That's mm-hmm. a D move. It is. It, I mean, like, look, man, and property owner can do whatever the hell they want with it. But he was also told. Not only that, he yeah, was no. also told, like, yeah. hey, the and building, guess what? If the building's condemned, nothing positive is You can also move that entire brick wall and relocate it somewhere you else. Can then pay for it for the artist. Exactly That's right. it for your headlines with that. Mike Hawk is up. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time for the return of Ted versus the FCC. Bad jokes and another round to profile this. Yes, indeed. It is all true. We are out of here for now, but we shall return. So until then, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful.